well. So. Cool. Which is kind of fun. Kind of fun. Really? Oh, look, we're live on the dork table. Time to mute the game. Yes, Miss <laughs> Kate, time to mute the game. <laughs> I don't want to hear score in the background and thinking somebody else is getting some and I'm not, damn it. Oh, wait, did I say that live on the radio? Yeah, you sure did. <laughs> and welcome, everybody in RLM and other place lands. And we got Larry Woods hanging around, too, today. This is Flash. You're this is Grammy. King of the dork. <laughs> yeah, he's the dork killer king. And, and hey, Larry. And yeah, Larry Larry Dork came along to to hang out and tell us where he's updating on the uh, coil situation. We'd probably start the show out with that. But the first things first, and we we always say thanks to Grim for giving us a place to play. Hey, mental, yes. get our little aggro out. <laughs> such. You want to say hey to the bots in the bodies, Miss Mary? Do you? Bots do you? Bodies, do you? Bots, hey, dude. There's 40 of them here. Wow. Barman is right up top. Barman. He is the most, he's a splendiferous bot. He's like the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Or not. Just ask me. I'll tell you. Yeah. We also got Beetle. Beetle. And I don't know if Beetle's got Pippi on his lap or not. Beetle's Ooh. been going to get mail and all that other fun shit. That's mail with an N-A-I-L, oh, not M-A-L-E. Oh, okay. Just, just for clarification purposes Thank here. You. We also got Grimner, the RLM Grimner. god, don't you know? And he is the reason why we are able to play here. Thank you, Grim, once again for that. The lovely Moose Goyle is here as well. I think last night they had a freaker's ball. They oh, freaked. Yeah. yeah, they did. I heard it. They she freak out. Do, do, do. Okay, see, I, I got it. musical shit going in my head again today. Y'all I, watch I out. I listened to the show. You did? Me and awesome. Two in the morning. Ah, Unless, I also see the lovely Miss Kate is here. She's been right. listening to hockey. Hockey. Ho hockey. 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 Hock. Hock. It's a very, hockey pucky. very, very good oh, game. Oh, hockey pucky. Yeah. I think stranger people, danger. You know there ain't anybody stranger than me, so you better beware. People <laughs> like to say, they like to say the word puck. puck. That That's really why hockey is so, so popular. Is people like to say the word puck. Go ahead. Drop your puck. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> See? It's contagious, isn't it? Yes, it is. Anyway. Yes, it is. I also see Anti is here. Hey. Anti. And the Asmodeus Asmo is also oh. here, as well as Chalsa Denis, who's Yay. got the O right out of there, because wow. apparently Obama was know. enough O oh. for any generation. Ouch. Chloe yeah, gotta isn't going to like that. <laughs> well, you know, too bad, so sad. If she doesn't like it, why doesn't she come on the radio and speak her piece? I there you go. I hey, Miss Chloe E.E. -E. I also see Diam Van Meter, who is a very talented Diam guitar maker. Van Meter. And a very lovely lady <sighs> as well. That's why she's Diam Van Meter. You're here, Flasher. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm right here. What? Right here. 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 What? 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 I, I didn't do it. <laughs> I was. I, I wasn't I even in town that again. day. <laughs> okay. I'd do it again if I thought I wouldn't get caught. <clears throat> in Ooh, any case, I you're also so see American. Burke is here. Yeah, who? Frumpy work. Frumpy. As well as. Canada? I'm here. Kind of, uh, sort of. Okay, physically, crappy. I'm here. Mentally, well, that's a crapshoot. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's, very yeah. good. Great parts are us. I also see JJ's. No, 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 JJ's. That Scottish seller wearing a kilt. kilt. In the kilt. God love men in kilt. <laughs> I also. <laughs> Who knew Mary was a cross dresser? Speaking, speaking, of, <laughs> speaking of men in kilt. Um, I, there's a, a Facebook page called Darn Good Yarn, and what they do is they yeah. they um, it's a company that takes uh, saris, you know the the Indian clothing, yeah. like over in yeah, India, yeah, not yeah. yeah and when people, you know, when they get holes or something like that, they recycle them, and they make wrap around skirts out of them. And one lady had posted on there just recently that. Her husband wanted her to stop wearing those skirts because they make you look fat. They're unattractive. You look just unmade up, blah, 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 blah. 
And I told her he's just jealous because he doesn't have a skirt to wear. <laughs> but, you know, at least now you don't have to worry about him borrowing your skirt. Wow. And she thought that was a rather excellent way of looking at it because it's like, really, dude, seriously, they're they're made out of silk. Yeah. I mean, what the hell? Go up and feel your wife's backside. I'm wow, not... there you go, Miss Mary, thinking ahead. I know. You're always well, ahead of yeah. the Well, yeah. It's where, a silky kilt. Where were, you, where were you when they came up with this corona crap? You could have fixed it in a week. I could have. I could have. But nobody wanted to listen to me because I'm crazy. Yeah, well, you but left off with, I think... Uh, Meister Brow. Yeah. Meister Brow is here, as well as Prince, who Whoa. is in print, not the purple Prince. one. Although I did get a new purple house coat, so now I can be the purple one. I also, <laughs> I also see Rob Weiss is here. Rob, did you fire up the bubbler, or is he just kind of logged in but not playing? I can't tell. I don't see him firing up no uh, bubbler. Damn we... it. Damn it. Uh. I also see trust no one who doesn't even trust himself. And he I shouldn't know. either. You know, talk about stranger danger. And looky there, we got a oofta. 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 See, now I no, think of veggie tails. No, 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 oof. just oof. U -F -F. It's just oof. Yeah. But, 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 but shit. Whenever, I hear, whenever I see oof, I think of veggie tails and oh. oofta. Well, yes, that's between that's over. between you and uh, I'm not getting involved. I'm staying out of oh, it. Oh, okay. I'm might be like Switzerland. Whatever. Whatever. Just charge you both rent. White. Huh? I'm just going to charge you both rent, but I'm staying out of the fight. Go ahead and charge rent. See if I pay you. I want to see you try and evict me out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Looky there. We got a lovely Miss Vanna White, the letter-turning bot of the RLM channel, as well as W4DKV, who has once again come between Vanna and Weatherdork, who is the lover of her bots and bodies. Because Weather Dork is kind of botular like that. Uh, we also have a woodman in here, as well as the Phantom. It's the, the Phantom. Phantom. <laughs> and a CC66. And looky there, the lovely Miss Psycholo. Now, I did see something yesterday about Psycholo being on a on a banner with uh, is he is she doing the It's All Connected with Grimmy? Yep. That's the rumor act. That was okay. And what time and day is this going to be? Uh, ooh, I think it was two o'clock on the East Coast. Two two p.m. on the East Coast. Eastern time yeah. on Mondays. Yeah. Sweet. Well, you know, I may have to if I can get mom. You know, if she's down for a nap or something, I may have to try and listen. Ooh. If nothing else, then when I'm driving home on yeah. Wednesdays, so you always got the then reruns. I can. Yeah. Then I can listen in, you know, while I'm driving home. You're or so just smart. wait till I get home. You're so smart. Wow. I'm I know, because I'm like so totally excited <laughs> that that Cycle is doing that with Grim. That will be an awesome show. Oh, I, I they're, just know they're, it. They're a, a very odd pair, too. It, odder than us? No, I just I, said they're an odd pair. I mean, the accents, okay. just the accents alone. Well, so it will be, RLM will soon be the radio broadcasting network for the odd couples. Probably, <laughs> yeah. We get Wayne on here. Oh, that would be really interesting. Probably. Although he and I agree an awful lot. I, so see, yeah. It it's not as much fun. That's why me and Cirque don't do it. It's like we, we see the same shit, just different sides of the street. Ah, I be the I be the pirate and she be the Palestinian, baby. Know what I'm talking ah, about? Well, huh, huh, huh? All about perspectives. We also see the lovely Miss Chloe. Uh, she's uh, got to uh, be a double uh, uh, She's wow. like a double. <laughs> like something, all right. <clears throat> but there that, are. That sounded like a. That sounded like a real serious like. Uh, yeah, kind of thing when you did that. There are remedies that will cure you of just about anything. <laughs> well, that's true. And the <laughs> cyborgian noodle, when he touches <laughs> it, will be filled with the cyborgian noodliness of Twice. it all as well. Twice. We got a Dedork Cakes, too. And who mental. doesn't like pancakes? That's and mental. Dedork Cakes. Hey, mental. 
Yeah. Got some N7 here as well as N7. a flat U lamp. That's a flat uh, That's U my lamp. ask me. That's my alter ego. That's today. you? Yep. That's your alter Oh, you've changed alter Flatulence. egos again. You know, there yep. are times when I have mental flatulence mm. and then there's times when I'm no longer honking for the right of way, my brain just shits itself. Oh, and man. I usually do it live on the radio. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. But you do it you, you do it with style. Ah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. It's kind of a splatter paint kind of thing, but you know, what the hell. I also see Frumpy is here. Frumpy, Frumpy. Frump Canada. <laughs> From Kanaki Stan. Yeah. I am Lone Frog is also Way, here. Frog Frog's here too. Go Froggy. figure. Whoa. We got a kiss in the chat. Mm, pucker up, baby cakes. Joe Biden is hiding around the corner. And we got an L. Woods here. Hey, Larry. How hey, you doing? Larry. He's, he's there. He's on the headphones. He's there. He's loitering. He's waiting for us he's to get loitering. finished with our crap. I know. So he can say well, something important to the listeners. Say <laughs> something important. He I hope ignore. so. Right. I also see a Matt WJ 2002. <clears throat> I have a frog in my throat. Frog, what are you doing in my throat? <laughs> God dang, that's stop kind of furby. That. Hey. <laughs> uh, stop it. I also see a pom 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 sauce as well as a smart as the holiest Roger ever. Ami, 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 ami. And to round out the crew, the one and the only Z poop 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 pick. So there you go. Bada bing, bada boom. And now over to you, Flash Rooney Dork and Larry for the updates yeah. on Larry's drop on a coil. See, I talked about having mental flatulence and my brain shit, and now Larry's going <laughs> to drop a coil on y'all. So, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> huh? How does that it, translate, Larry? I'm not sure. Because you're visiting us in Dork Table territory and. We may hurt your feelings here because we say terrible oh, things to we, people. Be very Okay, so are, would you like to give us an update on on the uh, coil project on the dork table? Sure. All right, we'll do that, and I'll, I'll mute out and take a few minutes and tell us what you got on your mind. Okay, Larry's a complete idiot. Nah, -uh. That's it. goodbye. Nah, -uh, nah, nah. -uh. You ain't a complete idiot. I think you've got a few functioning brain cells, therefore it's not complete. Oh, okay, just almost. Uh, we we had a major breakthrough with uh, rethinking our mistakes. Uh, I wanted to coil one way, and one of the other members wired a different way. Now, as I've been saying all along, every coil will do something. But in my infinite wisdom, I said, well, that's wound wrong. So all we got to do is change a few wires, and that will correct the polarity in that coil. So we changed the wires and went on with our test. And it wouldn't work, and it wouldn't work, and it wouldn't work, and it was three or four weeks of it wouldn't work. And we kept changing the way we hooked it up, and it still wouldn't work. And we came up with a lot of electrical designs that are going to work for something because out of 12 circuits, there's at least 144 ways to hook it up. So we know that these are going to do something. We just haven't found an application for them yet. But we got to thinking about it and got to looking at it and got to figuring what the magnetic field was doing and said, oh, Maybe he wasn't wrong in the first place. So we changed all the wires back, went back to one of the original drawings, and now we have residential power ready and waiting to go. We lit up the street light that creates the load that makes the whole system work. So we have residential. Once we get six houses on residential hooked up, then our three-phase will work. And we're ready to roll. Sweet! Yay! Finally! Have you ever had a chance to talk to Larry before, Mary, or is this, is this your first? Um, No, not really. I mean, yeah. I've listened in quite a few times, but yeah, not really. Well, now spoken. 
Now's your chance to ask, you know, because Mary's big on the uh, on the herbs and the oils, natural remedies, stuff like that. So oh, I, me mm-hmm. too. Well, I thought maybe it would be nice to have her talk to somebody else on the door table for a few minutes about something you got, you know, you both know a lot about. Or unless you want to just hit a brick wall and see what happens. <laughs> You know, I I was on city council for four years. I think I've run headlong into brick walls enough in my lifetime. Thank you very much. Well, the thing that's got my attention might not have yours. And I'll I'll bring it up, and and if you don't want to talk about it, switch to something else. But I've been watching the damn Internet like a dumbass, like I always do. And I found out that the the kids are running the fucking gunfights in the streets now. So... uh, We've got gunfights in the streets for beginners, mm-hmm. and they're lethal. And I think I, I told I figured August would be the real catalyst for what's coming to society. And if you don't want to talk about that, uh, I guess you can pick on vegetables or something. <laughs> well, I I think a lot of these shooting things, a lot of shit gets brought out before there's any real facts going on. And so <clears throat> I've been having a little bit of verbal tete-a-tete with a niece of mine this morning um, about some of this shit and trying to explain to her that coming back with violence does not bring back whomever you're protesting, peaceful protesting, because theirs, their life was taken too soon, unjustly, unfairly, whatever. So when you go out and you, you kill someone else because somebody else that you never met killed somebody else that you never met you know and so you go out and you kill someone that you've never met just because just because you know it's like i'm i'm tired of it i'm over it it's like god dang it people grow a backbone grow some responsibilities start being accountable for your actions and this shit of just allowing kids to just run rampant, stop it. Just stop it. And parents, start stepping up to your kids and telling them, listen, y'all behave like this, I'm going to drop kick you through the goalpost of life, you little shit. So, you know, that's that's where I'm at right now. I so. totally agree. When, when I was young and brought up around weapons, uh, Gun control meant you hit what you aimed at. These idiots <laughs> with guns that go out and shoot three times into a car, <laughs> miss the entire the car. fucking car, <laughs> shoot into the crowd and kill three of their own people. That's stupid. Yeah. Mom and Dad, where in the hell have you been? But it's funny. <laughs> Don't you raise your children anymore? You let the TV do it? You let the schools do it? See what you get? Adulting is hard. And part of this, I really, and you know, I hate to, because I used to say, God dang it, you know, stop blaming video games for all this violence. But really, I'm to the point now where it's like, oh my Lord, come on, people. You're buying your kids these freaking games where they go home and they shoot them up, shoot them up, and then they reset the game and they go back and they shoot them up, shoot them up again. And you have not instilled in your children that, okay, this is a game. Number one, why the hell are you buying these games for your little ones anyway? Huh. Any any child under 18, I don't think, should have this kind of shit. Mm. My personal opinion. Mm. And number two, you know, why are you condoning this kind of behavior? And then why are you not <laughs> correcting your children and let them know that, that's a game. It's just like with on the cartoons, you know. Okay, they're Bruce taking away the guns shirt. from yeah. Elmer Fudd and Yosemite Sam because the fucking cartoons are violent. But it's okay to let kids play these damn games. And then mm-hmm. they go out on the street with guns and they start shooting people. And then they go, well, I didn't realize they wouldn't just get up and we could reset and start over again. <laughs> or, or you get the Nimrods that, you know... They're behind all this shit. They're the ones that are getting people all riled up and getting them to go out and do this, you know, all this peaceful protesting. 
and then when someone actually reacts mm. to them in kind, as in they give them back a dose of their own medicine, then they have little pissy fits on their videos and put it out on social media and like, that's not fair. That's not fair. How dare you? How dare you? You want war? We'll give you war. Uh, excuse me. I thought that's what was going on. Have you not looked around? Freaking looks like Beirut in a lot of these towns. What the hell? Wow. If you can't, you know, that was one of those things we grew up all the time. Mom would always, you know, when we would go run into mom, mom, he hit me back. Okay. Don't dish it out if you can't take it. Sorry. That's. That's my personal opinion. If you can't take it, don't dish it out. And I really, honest to God, they're getting all these kids that have been fed all this crap and getting them out there on the streets so that they're the ones that get to, you know, get shot. And then the parents are going, well, it's not fair. You shot my child. Excuse me. Parenting is hard. Yes, it is. But you need to be the parent in this situation. And what the hell are you doing allowing your kids out of the house to do that shit in the first place? It's a little late. Wow, 17. Come on. Nobody told me what to do when I was 17. But I didn't do stupid shit like go to 20 miles away from where I live to go defend my neighborhood with a gun. That would be stupid. But that's what I read. The kid wasn't Was it an intelligent move? No. No, Probably not. No. And yet, I've I've watched some of the videos of this, yeah. and I saw the pummeling he was getting, and I saw the guy coming at him with yeah. a handgun. Yeah. I just shot the little son of a bitch, too, and he's lucky he got shot in the arm. I did not see the rest where someone else got shot. That's the only videos that, you know, I saw build up to, yeah. and it's like, Yeah, but how, okay. does it, how does it make you feel about your, you know, your homeland? This is How does like, it make me feel about my homeland? It makes me feel like there's an awful lot of adults that drop the ball. That's, yeah, that's what, what it I, makes me feel like. That's what I meant about, you know, uh, make it for beginners because you got kids out there doing it. You know what's sad is, hmm. is this poor child hmm. is going to have to live with knowing that he took someone else's life. Two of them. Why I do you two. think... I mean, why do you think a lot of those kids coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq are so damn messed up? They have to live with the fact that either they took someone else's life or they were standing there right beside a buddy, I know someone like this, who was standing there BSing with them. They started catching, you know, weapons coming at them, and he turned to look at his buddy, and his buddy was cut in half. I mean, that's going to mess with your head. So what the hell are we doing to our kids? We need to stop this. As adults, we need to stop this. But you're, how do you define what this is? I think the this that you speak of is a lot bigger than most people think. The this, the this? Is people aren't, they're not having to accept the responsibility of their own actions. <laughs> of their own actions. Agreed. No kid left behind and everybody gets a trophy was the worst thing that ever happened to this country. If yes. you lose, you lose. You're not Period. a winner because you played the game. And yet, on the other hand, you can be a winner because you played the game because Hopefully, if your parents taught you right, then you saw how the other kids, what they did in order to win at this game, you know, and learn from the example that was set by those that, you know, bested you, if you will, and then up your game. But no, we don't have that. It's like, oh, looky here, you get a participant participation trophy because you sat on the bench the whole time. Why did yeah. you sit on the bench the whole time? Because if you couldn't play the position you wanted to play, you weren't going to go play. I also coached kids like that when I was coaching Little League. Yeah, Pissed off that well, they couldn't play first base, so they just sit on the bench. My, my father had an answer for that little situation. Oh, yeah, and what was your father's answer? Competitive swimming. 
And, you know, learning to compete is not necessarily a bad thing. But, man, when I when I heard someone tell me, well, second place is just the first loser, I looked at him and said, are you shitting me? Seriously, that's the way you teach your kids? Second place is, okay, you almost got there. Work at it a little more. If you cannot, because any given Sunday, everyone is going to be second place at one point or another. Well, that's not why I interrupted with it. I was thinking more in terms of, What's not a contact sport, nobody gets left out unless you're not fast. If you're not fast, you're not going to be wanting to do it in the first place. Well, and yet you're still getting exercise. Oh, yeah, it's a constant. You're in the the pool doing laps. Yeah, yeah. and and you're constantly, you know, trying to improve yourself. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, faster, faster, faster. it's a life-saving skill if you fall off a boat. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm not big for water, but, I mean, I can do it, but I don't like to. It's weird. I, mean, I see a lot of people go to the swimming pool. <laughs> I, and there's a swimming pool for the public here. And no, I, every year I think I want to go in that, but I never bother to go. See, and I love swimming, and I don't get to go swimming, but I can remember taking swim lessons that, and taking Junior Lifesaver, that. and we had to tread water for a half an hour. And then the, you know, since we didn't have anything else going on, they said, well, let's see how long you can tread water. And I tread water for an hour just because, to me, that's relaxing. Now, there's a lot of other people that couldn't do it. But, you know, if you figure it out and use your hands first, use your legs next, then go back to using your hands, then doing, (laughs) you know, using both your hands and your legs. Don't forget the lotion. (laughs) So it's... (laughs) To me, it was just we were it talking was about yeah, but we were talking about kids shooting each other, and I took you off that. <laughs> I didn't mean to take you this far. Well, but you know what? <laughs> and like Larry, growing up, we learned how to properly handle guns, and yeah. Dad took every damn one of us out, and you know he would buy a couple of watermelons, <laughs> and he would have us shoot at the watermelon, and once one of us hit the watermelon, then he would take us up and say, "Now see." That's what happens to someone's head if you're playing with a gun. So don't point a gun at anything that you aren't willing to shoot. And so we learned early on that guns are not toys. And that, I think, is probably something that needs to be, not probably, it is. You know, they are tools, yes, Mm -hmm. but they are very, very dangerous tools in the wrong hands. What do you think, Larry? We we were big hunters. We hunted quail and dove and deer and turkey and stuff like that. And I started out, when I was eight years old, I already had a BB gun. And for my eighth birthday, I got a hunting knife and a twenty two rifle. When we went quail hunting, the first season, I was allowed to carry the BB gun only. And I swung the BB gun across my dad i i pointed it at him as i was turning around he made me walk over a mile back to the car through the woods by myself put the gun in the trunk of the car and then find them and hunt the rest of the day with nothing well that taught me to never ever point a gun at anybody harsh as it was yeah yeah but what was he watching you from afar to make sure you didn't, you know, screw things we, up? Or we work? used to play the game yeah. that where's the car? When we got out of sight of the car, Dad would say, "Point to the car," hmm. and if I was wrong, he would he would tell me. Yeah, and I just I learned how to navigate the woods like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Because the woods, now, those things are there. Once you go in. You better mark something, or there's no because it all looks the same. Yeah, it would be like somebody from the country going to the city for the first time. It all looks the same. <laughs> so, I hate that. Uh, oh, I, I I managed no matter where I've been. But, We've got a huge apartment complex close hmm. to here that every building is exactly the same, Ooh. and I would never be able to find my way home if I lived in a place like that. 
Yeah, this street that we live on, me and Cirque, every house is different. And there's apartment buildings and houses. And everything is different. It's just amazing. People from every area, too. It's, a, it's kind of a like a mixed up Danish neighborhood. Because <laughs> most everybody here speaks Danish. Well, yeah, because you're in Denmark. Well, Duh. right, but even people from other lands, because I take my share of shit for not not having put in some interest in learning the language. But I tell them, you know, after two or three beers, really, you expect me to remember Danish. What do I look like? Yeah. Forget well, it. You it look ain't like a happen. garden gnome. Right. So in the long run, they, then they come to terms with that real quick. Oh, yeah, you're probably right. And everybody speaks dog Latin anyway, so shut up. Quit picking on me. Big <laughs> well, the best way to uh, the best way to make people comfortable though is to be able to take a joke about yourself. Yes. And language is so, some. I think at one point it mattered to me, and today I don't give a fuck anymore. So I don't care. What are you going to do? Call me names? <laughs> names. Names. Right, but I mean, I have my limits where I want to be able to get along with somebody in a decent way. You know, sometimes me and you get a little bit nasty to each other about an, a concept, but once the show's over, it's it's that's it, it's over. And then there's no constant to this. It's so weird. But I didn't expect to hit you with uh, the gun thing with the kids, and to get you so riled up. <laughs> well, it. Wow. It just. You know, it irks me because I see all these people right. People jumping to conclusions. Well, are you looking for somebody to blame or are you looking for why is society so fucked up that the teenagers are out there shooting at each other with real guns? Hey, baby, look at this. I, I think a lot of it is there are just entire – and, you know, parents, you got two parents working outside the house. Yeah, but you got a that's kid. That's basically the way the system is set up uh, don't put anymore. The, but you're putting the responsibility of using a gun, which is an adult act, that the guy chose to take. As far as I'm concerned, he picked that road. I don't give a fuck. He did he's pick 17 that road. or not. He, he was bright enough to use the gun, then he's bright enough to pay the consequences of using the gun. Absolutely. Yes. 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 It's a it's a lose lose situation yeah, no matter how you look at absolutely. it. Absolutely, but see, then you want to put responsibility on shit like parenting and all this crap, and I don't think it has fuck all to do with parenting at all. I think. Uh, see, and I think it does. I I think parents instilling at an early age. Hmm. Now, granted, kids are gonna go with peer pe peer pressure. Okay, here we but, go. See, I didn't. You know, I I put a lot of this. I just flat ass think the adults have just failed their kids, and I'm not saying just us. I'm saying for generations now. Hmm. Just like Hitler said, "Give me your kids until hmm. they're eight years old, and they'll be Nazis for the rest of their life." Okay, all right. Yes, Mary, I see that. Mm -hmm. But see, who had me for? I I don't get. How did I get where I'm at? Because I went through the same upbringing everybody else did, but I've got a completely different value system than an average uh, American. Well, see, and that's that's the whole part of we all of us being individuals, you know, and we all have our own perspective, and we all, mm. you know, make decisions based on, you know, our life experience mm. and what we've been taught. And some people have a very good gut reaction where they go. Uh, excuse me, what you're teaching me is bullshit. And some people do not, but I still think it falls back on the parents. And basically, when I look out and see, I see all these kids hmm. that are getting away with behaving this way. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, well, see, I took my getting away with shit. See, I, I got a different outlook. My father was a strict disciplinarian, so I learned what... Uh, Larry learned the hard way. If you don't want to get caught, be smooth. If you don't yeah. want to get in trouble at all, don't fuck up. Do it the right way. 
And, and so, see, when yeah. I see all these kids out there doing all this shit, I think apparently the parents have not taught these children that if you don't want something done to you, don't do it to someone else. And that starts at a very early age. You know, granted, like I said, peer mm. pressure is going to be one thing, but that's why parenting doesn't stop mm. just once they start going to school. You have to be involved with your kids while they're in school, too. Ask them how their day was. Ask them what happened during the day. Ask them what the teachers are teaching them. Christ, have you seen Tennessee? <laughs> they don't want parents to know yeah. what they're teaching yeah. their kids. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. I mean, seriously Amazing. here, yeah. people. Mm -hmm. I told you. you I, know, went so against, I went against the state when I lived in Knoxville, against the school system, and they whipped my ass in the end. But I tried to fight, but fuck, they got too much power. And they got control over the media. I was even on the media, but didn't. what my point was was kind of overshadowed by the system. So nothing came of it for me. Well, and that's what I tried to tell my niece is, you know, because she kept saying, well, what about this person? What about that person? And I said, what is going on right now is not going to fix any <laughs> wow. of that. You cannot correct a problem with the same mindset <laughs> that, that made it, yeah. caused it. Yeah. You just plain can't. So you need to fix yourself first, and then you need to be an example, and you need to go out and, you know, hold yourself accountable for all of your words and deeds. Okay, but right now the Internet is making it look like America is in a collapse. Millions of people sure. out of work, riding in the streets, burning buildings, all this violence, shootings, blah, blah, fucking blah. Thank you, George Soros. Okay, yes. yeah, I don't disagree with that. You, you got a few words on that, Larry? Huh? Huh? It's, it's Go ahead. outside influences that are... Okay, the colleges are brainwashing the kids to go total wacko, to be total anarchists. And if you don't follow their way of thinking, you're ostracized. Well, yeah. no kid that age wants to be ostracized, so he goes along with it. Yep, it, they go it, along to get along. Yeah. Wow. Well, wow, yeah, see, no, nah, I just never... Don't make waves. I've been so lucky with that. <laughs> Guess it explains a lot more than I thought. <laughs> I've made waves all my life. I like well, your waves, mister. The, I have, the, I've kind of sort of made waves most of my life. And, it's, mm -hmm. and you know what, Grimmy, they're all talking about, you know, the school of Molotov cocktails and all that other fun shit. And actually... If you snoop around on the interwebs just a little bit, you will find that the BLM and Antifa are actually giving classes on how to make Molotov cocktails. Wow. That's just how because they're to too stupid to know how their own self. Wow. Yeah. I was reading the Anarchist Cookbook when I was in high school. Ooh. Yeah. And I never, I made bombs, <sighs> but I never used them on people. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's one thing to play with toys. There's another thing to be a violent idiot. Yeah. See, well, I, and see, I produce hydrogen here at the house and, and put it in a two-liter bottle and shoot it up like a rocket <laughs> just for fun, but I don't shoot it at somebody. <laughs> We've got a rail gun that shoots a, a six-inch gutter spike through a two-by-four at 90 feet. Damn. But I don't shoot it at the go at the passing cars. <laughs> I yeah. hope not. <laughs> We'd be missing you. See, I you. think if if you look back at a lot of this, I really think it goes to the whole mindset that, you know, not all life is precious. And people just don't freaking understand that life is precious. And whether you, you know, whether you believe in reincarnation or any of that other fun shit, mm. it's like, you guys don't really grasp the concept of respect for life, period. Oh. Even if, you know, and I hear people say, well, that's why I'm vegan. That's why I'm vegetarian, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay, so do you respect the life of the plants that you just consumed? That's oh, life no. as well. You know, 
we have just become such a disrespectful society. Ouch. It's you must respect me, but I don't have to respect you back. Ouch. Kind of thing. And that's and it's a it's a society that has become very self absorbed and yet has very little self confidence. When you really look at it, it has very little self confidence. Or it wouldn't be going out of its way to get right in your face and say, you must listen to me. That's only because he's got 50 other people behind him. Get that little punk or bitch out there on the street alone and let them do something like that to a single person. They won't do it because they're cowards. Yeah, it's the bully mentality. And the Internet has made that very, very easy. Because, you know, they can say all kinds of shit on the Internet and not have a problem. But, man, when they get out into the face-to-face -face interpersonal relationships and all of a sudden that keyboard commando attitude don't quite cover it because somebody will get right up in your face and punch you in the nose for saying something in, per in person, face-to-face, -face, that you've gotten away with saying forever as a keyboard commando. Yeah. Wait, that's not very fair. How come he punched me in the face yeah, just because well, I called him an Uncle Tom? But, I'm not racist. Black Lives Matter. You're an Uncle Tom. Okay. Where does all Where does all the violence come from, though? I mean, other countries are are protesting against each other, and some places violence is more prone than others. See, and, and I, it is the lack of value or respect for life. Hmm. And I really think it is also a lack of self-confidence and self-worth. Why should I treat them any better? My life isn't worth that much. Why do they think that way? Because they haven't had to actually work for anything. That yeah. Now, I'm saying this about, it's a blanket statement, I know that, and it's not true for everyone. But predominantly, you see a lot of these kids and... and have they ever had to do the dishes around the house, pick up their own clothes, do their own laundry? You know, when they learn that, you know, there are responsibilities that go along with as you grow up, then they start getting a little self-worth because, hey, look, I did my own laundry. I cleaned up my own room without being told. I cooked my own meal. It's a self-valuing kind of kind of thing but when things are given to them they have no respect for it i can just get another one so uh, what if i punch this person out so what that's to me i think that's the underlying issue is no respect for life no respect for themselves therefore no respect for anyone else then how do you explain the care old lady that can't even read the hands on a clock <laughs> if it's digital, she can tell you what time it yeah, is. If it's, yeah. if it's analog, she has no idea. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I say so. I feel like I live on another planet sometimes. <laughs> Cause yeah. The things I, I see. I want to get off. Well, no, I'm I'm quite content. Yesterday, I was sitting here playing the game on the computer or something, looking out my window, and I see three girls walking. And later on, I think about it, there was two Danish girls and an Arab girl because she had the, what you call it, thing on her head. But when I first saw them, I just saw three kids. And then I'm interneting, and I, the more I think of hey, wait a minute, it's two Danish girls and an Arab girl. So the more I sit in stuff, the more I identify it. <laughs> no? Yeah. And I'm just getting to the point where it's like, I don't care what you wear. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care what you believe. So long as whatever you wear, you believe, what color you are, if you're purple with green polka dots, yeah. I don't give a no, shit. None of that seems it's to matter. It's how you man. act and yeah. how you talk. That's how I will cast judgment upon you. Well, right. Yes. But you've seen teenage girls tripping down the street. I've seen them all my life doing this. And these three were no different than any other three until I thought about, wait, what would I see that was weird? It was the hat thing, the the scarf over the head. And yeah. The, there's a few Muslim girls in, in the city. I run into them downtown all the time. But it took me a few minutes to start getting all uh, Jew about it. 
You know, at first I just saw three kids, and then the more I, then I started, what? what was weird? Ah, see, then I got all Jewy about what I saw. Start yeah, uh, you identifying the difference. races and shit like that. But it's not my first instinct, but when I sit and stew and shit, it, it goes there. I like to overanalyze. Well, and I like to overanalyze as well. And there are times, you know, like yesterday, I was out in the garden pulling weeds and doing all kinds of, you know, when you stop and think about it, everybody's got their own perspective. Duh. And are any of them really wrong? Who cares? Because each perspective is right for whoever has that perspective. Yeah, but see, the difference between you and Larry and Cirque is Cirque can grab me by the hand and take me into her perspective. You two, you can't do that. True. I and snatch your ass by your hair and drag you down. Come on down, Sherlock. I, I, but what I mean, you could if if we weren't on the internet. But see, that's yeah. But there you go. That's the whole thing. Is the internet has changed stuff? Oh. Just it has tad, changed yeah. interpersonal relationships. Yes. Mm -hmm. It loosens our tongues just a tad. And, and the people that you meet on the internet are not that way in person. I just had that experience last week. Uh oh. What happened, Larry? Uh. A, a person that I've known on the internet for over six years uh, was making a trek across the country to to show the COVID-19 garbage. And I said, well, as you pass through Missouri, stop by and say hi. Well, it turned out that this guy was an alcoholic junkie that was never... Never sober, never straight, just not the kind of person that I wanted to be around at all. Uh, now, I'm an alcoholic, but I've stopped drinking. Okay. Drinking doesn't bother me, but I don't do it. Mm -hmm. And this guy came and, and three nights in a row got drunk and passed out in my house, spilled beer all over my carpets, uh, smoked so much dope that he would would stick his head as we went to dinner or something he'd roll down the window and stick his head out at a stoplight and say boy i'm really fucked up to the car next to us uh just not the kind of a person that i like to be around and finally i had to ask him to leave and now he's on a campaign to ruin me because i wouldn't show him any of our any of our secrets, or oh. <laughs> none of our coils, and wouldn't uh. let him sit in on the on the private meetings that we have and oh. shit like that. So I'm going to ruin you because you're a fraud. <laughs> we that was fun. I know it's like my imaginary friend on the on the RLM. Cool. You just well, you know, you just got to take people's behavior with a grain of something. <sighs> But they never cease to, uh, what's the right word, come through. They always show you what they are in the uh, long run. So, and I've met people that I've known on the Internet and mm. then met them in person. Mm. Some of them are absolutely wonderful. Mm. Some of them are, thank God, they are such a wonderful life lesson that <laughs> I think <laughs> I'm not going to repeat. <laughs> See? I, I look at everybody and see the faults in them, but not so that I can be critical of them, but so that I know the things that I do not want to be like. Yes. Hmm. Hey, don't be a dark like me then, man. I get in all kinds of trouble. <laughs> trouble is yeah. my middle name. Now, that's such nonsense. Trouble. I haven't been in trouble since I was a child. <laughs> Me too. Or I've had a well, few. Well, you're only in trouble if you get caught. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've had, <laughs> I've had a few experiences, but trouble, nah. Me and trouble just pass each other in the hallway. <laughs> well, and I don't go looking for trouble anymore. I've I've done my whole 
be in trouble thing, they, a.k.a. getting caught at doing something I knew better than to do. Caught. <laughs> and sometimes that whole getting caught thing, yeah. it wasn't necessarily getting caught by somebody else. It was getting caught by karma and coming up and biting me on the ass. And it's like, well, I, okay, yeah. I learned. I'm not doing that shit again. Oh, <laughs> you know, so. the duality strikes. Yeah. There you go, guys. I'll talk to you next time. Okie dokie. Thanks, Hey, thanks Larry. a lot, Larry, yeah. for showing up. And, and I'll see you on Thursday. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was kind of unusual. We had somebody join us. I, I usually have to take hostages. Ah, I feel so proud of myself. <laughs> oh, isn't it so wonderful? Somebody actually wanted to play along. Yeah. Well, on purpose, even. And, see, Larry's, Larry's on to something that's just marvelous. All this... Huge nonsense. That's not it. it. He's on the right track about something. I see it. Whether it ever yeah. works, ah, we live in a world full of boneheads that want to make a profit. That's all they care about. Money, 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 money. So as long as we live like that, we're going to just have to have fun on the radio. <laughs> see, and I don't really, you know, I keep hearing all this shit about and this. Weed pulling time has all kinds of wonderful things run through my mind. Mm. And one of the things that ran through my mind is money is not the root of all evil. Mm. It's the desire to acquire more and more and more and more at any cost. You know, that is where. And it doesn't make a damn bit of difference if it's money or if it's food or if it's things or whatever it is. The desire to acquire at any cost. Mm. That's the problem. Yeah, but that's the way you do it. You have to be cutthroat. Well, I mean, that's and what, that's the whole competition instead of cooperation mindset. True. I mean, but see, that's what limits me and Cirque financially. It's, neither one of us really gives a shit. More than the necessities, eh, who cares? Nope. Yeah, and that's kind of the way I mean, Wayne and I are. Yeah, it's like, we got yeah. a roof over our head. We got enough to cover what we need and... Yeah, I took a bag full of tomatoes down to my friends today, and boom, you know, things are good. Ah, see, and later, as soon as we get done with this, Wayne and I are going to go out, and we're going to dig potatoes, and we're going to dig up an amaranth plant, and I'm taking potatoes to my brother and his wife down in Hayes so that they can make some stuff for mom, because they're always making food to bring over to mom. And my little sister wants to grow amaranth, and I have a couple of smaller amaranth that are starting to get the the flower on them. So mm. I'll transplant them and take them down because she's coming over the weekend to stay with mom. So Oh, okay. So, you know, to me, it's like, okay, if you have an overabundance, share. Yeah, that's the whole idea. What's the difference? Well, because we come from this idea of uh, commerce and uh, what is it? They always call it something. Um, the free trade nonsense. What? It, not commerce, but uh, I lost the word. Open no. source? No, 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 no. I'm talking about finance. Uh, oh. They call it shit. It's truly not. For example, they call. They think they have a. Oh, they got a free trade. They don't have free trade. They got monopolies no. that dictate what you can and what you cannot buy. Not who you're yeah. going to sell it to, but what they're allowed to purchase from you. They've turned it all around on the on the buyer. The buyer hasn't got any rights anymore. I watched I watched sales from when when I was in it in the '70s change, and all the people that have control now are not the person with the dollars on the receiving end, but the guy in control of what you buy from him. See, and the way I look at it, the more they limit mm. what I'm allowed to buy, mm. the less likely I am to buy from anything from them. It's like, fine, you limit my choices. Well, here's my choice. Up yours. Okay. Well, think about, okay, you say that about things like like I do. Like, say, for for example, Coca-Cola, right? Mm-hmm. Here I am in my little stand, and I'm not buying a Coke no matter fucking what. I drink water. And... You know what Coca-Cola does? What? Sells it to somebody else. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter what you do as an individual. But you know what would sure happen if, if I convinced a million people to not buy Coca-Cola for one day? And Coca-Cola would notice that. See, and the thing is, it's not necessarily just that. You need to look at all of the 
the other things that Coca-Cola owns. Because I decided years ago to boycott Nestle and anything that Nestle does. Mm -hmm. And so I have had to do without Butterfingers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you poor thing. my heart. Oh, I'm sure it does. But, mm -hmm. you know, I've I've looked at... You know, and I've actually done the whole tracing back yeah. to see yeah. what other companies that they own. And so there's an awful lot of products that I just no longer purchase mm -hmm. because I refuse to support the monster. Duh, duh. And out here, and the monsters to support are so obvious or easy to stay away from. Yeah. Because I'm isolated in a small country. There's not as much trade here to make, so... We're not getting a lot of stuff imported from anywhere. Most of it's local. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, the more I talk to people about, you know, why I make my purchasing choices or decide not to purchase from, mm -hmm. then some of them actually go along with some of the decisions that I've made for their own reasons. And some of them look at me like you're a nut job. Oh, yeah, sure. And you know what? Yeah. Either way, it's okay because this is my personal choice. This mm -hmm. is what I'm doing. Yeah. And in my world, that place no longer exists well, because I no longer feed that beast. How are you, speaking of that, how are you recovering from your accident? Um, I'm recovering pretty good, actually. You, say, you sound um, strong. I'm, but... <clears throat> I'm Now I'm dealing with the changes with going down and helping mom because that's that's different muscles okay. that I have yeah. to yeah. Um, use. And so I'm still doing the chiropractor once a week, yeah. but it's getting to the point where things are actually staying in place better. So, Ooh. And he said that, <clears throat> excuse me, he said that um, probably here in the next week or two, I should be to the point where I won't have to come in weekly to get readjusted and we'll just do a monthly maintenance but wow. you know it's just it's getting the muscles trained to not only deal with what i normally do on yeah. a regular basis with the extra and now dealing want. with the extra and different mm. um positions and muscles yeah you positions use and, and tolls that i'm i'm putting on my body because well how do you feel you, about it though are you good or are you doing it out of grudge I'm good. or Okay. I I'm was doing curious. good. I'm doing good. You sound strong. Like you don't sound like you just got into a major car accident a few months ago. You know, where people's yeah. voice and their behavior would weaken, and you notice it. They get frail and start sniveling well, and shit. And I actually <laughs> ran into someone that um, she used uh, to work at the bank ooh. out here, and I actually got my first, my very first loan. She was the bank officer that helped me get it, and then several other loans after that and so you know pretty good friends with her and her husband and her kids and i hadn't seen her since before the accident she said oh my god last time i heard about you i heard that you were in a, a head-on collision and i thought oh my god and they all walked away from it <clears throat> and i told her well yeah you know i i was the one that that actually got injuries, mm. if you wish to call mm. broken bones mm. injuries, everybody got hurt because mm -hmm. everybody got whiplash and yeah. and bruises and that kind of shit. But I was the only one with any kind of broken bones that had to heal. And <clears throat> I told her, you know, I just feel like we were so lucky, so blessed. You know, apparently we've got something to do. And Wayne said, Mary was paying attention. If it would have been me driving, it probably would have been a different story. Because, you know, he he has a tendency to look around at the fields and yep. those hay bales. And yeah, I know that. Whereas, I, you drive on autopilot because you've done the road so many times. You know where you're going. So you don't yeah. really specifically pay a whole – yeah, I do the same thing. Well, when I drove. But I know – yeah. yeah. But the way you're talking about is when those times where you're, you're really alert. You make sure nothing's going to go wrong. Well, I'm skittish on two two lane roads anyway, oh, just because yeah. okay. you know I've yeah. read too yeah. much about accidents where someone crossed the center line and and actually out here we've lost several kids because someone crossed the center line and hit head on and no more kids and so I've always been very very extra observant on two lane roads anyway, 
So, you know, when I saw her a mile down the road losing control of her car, it's like, okay, I got to get myself stopped if for no other reason <laughs> than yeah. to be able to offer assistance. Have, have well, you had a thankfully, chance to talk to her yet, though? No, okay. actually, I have not. Oh, sorry. Um, but you were but, saying, right. you know, it's just, to me, it was like that was just a natural, that's just how I yeah. Yeah. react. Yeah. So. Amazing but, so how that works. It is. It is. And I, you know, like I said, I'm just ever so thankful that we are still here. Well, I don't know. And, Cirque, Cirque calls it like a, what do you call it? Like a path or something. You know, you go down it and shit happens. Yes. And actually, I listened to, um, on that Open Minds, I listened to an interview with someone and I can't remember who it was, it's been a few weeks back now, where he said we have multiple exit points in our life, you know, that that we can either, you know, depending on how things are going or whatever, we can, like an instance, like my accident, could have been an exit point, and I was just done with this world. But obviously that was not an exit point that I was ready to take yet. <laughs> yeah. You said, you know, so. I ain't going anywhere, fucker. <laughs> Well, and you know, when oh, I heard dear. that, it was like, oh, wow, that's kind of interesting. Because I, I distinctly remember at one point, you know, right after the hearing the boom and smelling the, the fumes of the airbag and not being able to breathe. And I had a little bit of a panic moment there. And then I went, nope, just mm -hmm. breathe, <laughs> just breathe. And, and actually took my hands and did kind of a Heimlich maneuver on myself to where I could get myself to start breathing again. Mm. And and when I heard that in that interview, it was like, wow. So that was one of my exit points that I chose not to take. Cool. I kind of liked that thought process. Now I'm, I'm kind of sort of watching out <laughs> and thinking, huh. So when's my next exit point going to be? I, don't, I hope it's going to be a few years down the road. I'm not ready to take it yet. So, or, you know, you can also look at it as life as a highway and you got all of these exit ramps going along and, and I'm just not choosing to take an exit ramp yet. So, well, I kind of figured that out. So I'm ready to still be a pain in the backside to somebody. Yeah, <laughs> but you've only got two months left to kick uh, Trump around and then Biden's going to take over. Oh, you know, I... <laughs> That whole, <laughs> that whole thing, I just kind of. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Biden, Biden, I wish would just kind it of. It doesn't matter. I mean, what's what's what could happen? <clears throat> what's the worst that could happen if they if they replace Trump with Biden? <laughs> uh, well, and see, I actually saw something the mm. other day. Yeah. If they. If Biden got it, and then something were to happen, like within the first month or so, you yeah. Know? oh yeah, yeah, then we'd have Kamala, and then she would probably, you know, because looking at the game plan of how this shit works, oh well, you know, you need to have somebody with some experience in here, so let's put Shrillery in as VP. Well, you know, darn good and well that Kamala is not going to last another three months if Shrillery gets VP. Ah, uh, you've got good big high plans for the Democrats, don't you? <laughs> I I was just settling for as a revolving door kind of thing. It's ridiculous. You know, and it's, well, yeah, but see, right now you're doing the shit that Obama did politically. You you won't get to the shit. Which is why he had Biden as as his VP and yeah. not Shrillery because Biden was the best insurance policy yeah. he could ever have. You won't even get to the shit Trump started on his first day until his his four years are over. Oh, yeah. And then another oh, four yeah. years, and then they'll start doing the shit. He's done whatever. It's like a, I don't know, like reruns. <laughs> I should get Yeah, they always say the first term of any POTUS is like just dealing with the shit from the previous occupant. Yeah, wow. And that's pretty much, yeah. I just read the a uh, couple of weeks ago, there's a, a new Obamacare or an amendment or some update to this Obamacare shit he started. Well, because I got out of, of the States just when all that crap was becoming mandatory. 
that Obamacare crap where you have to have insurance yeah. or shit. I went, hey, no, what are you fucking telling me? I got to, I got to do anything. I said, watch this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, and see, that was one of the, I think that was part of the whole wonderful game plan, because when they first passed it, then nothing got enacted until after the election or the selection, however you wish to put it, <laughs> of, um, you know, the, his second term. Yeah, then things so started going into effect. But during that time frame, all of these insurance companies were going, oh, we've got to prepare for when these things go into effect. So we're going to start raising your rates every year. Oh, and we're by the way, we're going to start kicking people off of our plan. Oh, and by the way, we're going to start doing, you know, so that by the time it actually goes into effect, then you have those 30 million people that were going to be insured. Yeah, well, more than that wound up losing their insurance prior to because, well, you're going to have Obamacare anyway, so you'll get insurance. It's going to mm. cost you out the ass, but it was all a numbers game, every damn bit of it. Oh, and right. you can't tell me that it wasn't written by the insurance companies and the lawyers. Okay, you can't tell me it wasn't. Now it's 2020 and there's like 40 million people just this last year got their finances shit all over by this COVID. Yeah bullshit they're not going to reopen businesses Grim was talking about it on the Freakers Ball last night these places are shut down finished over wow look oh, yeah. at all the people that affects and then, yeah. uh, and then what gets the attention of the media is these fucking riots or shootings or some shit like that and I, I would venture to guess there's far worse crap going on than, than I, as bad as the shooting is boo, 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 way 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 uh, there's probably worse shit going on than that. That's not being reported on purpose. Oh yeah. And there's well, it's what, like uh, the other day I ran across those uh, 39 children in Georgia were rescued from a child sex trafficking ring, and then earlier today I saw another article about 130 kids in, uh, I believe it was Wisconsin. Don't don't quote me on that. But there was another one where there was like 130 kids were just rescued. Hmm. I don't remember if it was Wisconsin or Minnesota. But those things, you're not going to see that shit in uh, the mainstream media. They don't want that getting out there. They don't. Why not, Miss Mary? What would the problem be? Hmm. Because that would distract you from the narrative that they're trying to push. Well... You know, I've thought of that, and, and all I can c ever come up with is, no matter what they do, as long as they don't talk about uh, anything specific or final, okay, they can keep propping up this economy all they want on the medium, but it's not real. How, well, can, how, see, can, your, how can your economy be working if you just shut down 40% of your business? What do you mean? What's the left it of it? The reason it works is because people still believe it works. And we are in a co-creative reality. Well, it's going so, to crash, my friends. I have to tell you. Well, mm -hmm. and you know, I see that, you see that, but yeah. there's an awful lot of people out there that don't see it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it keeps going, because there's, we have not reached the tipping point. Oh, yeah, right, it. right, right. No, on, right, right, but the, shouldn't the violence in the streets and... Uh, when you get right down to it, that 17-year-old kid shooting three people bullshit, that right there, that should have never happened, let alone be the center point of interest from here to Denmark, you know, where you are to Denmark, blah, blah, blah. Why do I even know about this shit is what I'm, you know, well, what is what are they taking my attention away from to look at that and what am I missing out on because I'm paying attention about this kid? Yeah. And see, and that's yeah. that's where my brain always goes is yeah. what, what what's going on here? that they don't right. want us paying attention to. Because they're really playing this kid up huge. It's all over the uh, YouTube, and YouTube is uh, where I'm at. It's very selective. So to have my my screen flooded with something newsworthy, it smells uh -huh. it smells of fucking propaganda. And the pictures I saw, that kid didn't look seventeen. No, he looked pretty young. He looked pretty young. And I just, 
So, it, and I still can't See, come back to is why, what the hell would promote that in a kid to go out and wander the fucking streets with a loaded gun? I mean, in the first place, what, you're in America, what are you doing? So, apparently my make, you know, welcome to Palestine joke kind of came true. Because I'm seeing teenage kids walking the streets with arms. It's Palestine. It's not America. Yeah. And I don't live there anymore, so my opinion doesn't matter. Uh, But this is what you're going to get from somebody looking on it from another land where I can walk around here unarmed all I like. And the worst thing that's going to happen to me is going to be my own fault. Not because somebody's going to shoot me. See, and that's where I see everybody keeps saying 2020 is the biggest suck-ass year ever. I'm having a good time. And I keep seeing 2020 is, Mm. dude, there are life lessons all over the place if you pay attention. Cirque's Garden is, she's really getting a good good reputation amongst the locals. You know, because small town people, they gossip. You get a good product from somebody free. Believe me. <laughs> hey, you know these people? You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah. But, see, we know a lot of people by sight, but me and Cirque are kind of a couple. <laughs> so, you know, our, our entertaining time is very limited. Your any entertaining time is very limited as in... You don't just sit out in the yard and be entertained by squirrels and people. stuff like that. People, no, that that's just normal shit. But I mean, we don't uh, we don't associate with the ongoing population on a critical level. Just occasionally, just enough to be sociable, but not too much. Hmm. Call it pride. Well, and I I, I kind of sort of understand that because yeah, Wayne and I have gotten to the point where it's like. If we're out in the yard and a neighbor comes over and chit-chats with us, we'll chit-chat with them. But other than that, we really don't go out of our way. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Occasionally, I take the neighbor tomatoes and stuff because she really likes tomatoes and and she just plain can't grow them, apparently. So, yeah. well, I, yeah, I but I've always been one with the musicians and the artists. So the, the guys my age are they're either you know retired from it, they don't do it no more. So the ones that are doing it are 20 to 30. And I'm still, and that's still, like, I feel like I'm older than them, but I don't think that they, they don't seem to notice it. <laughs> you know? I don't get huh? treated like I'm an old guy or anything like that. And the kid that treat me like they treat each other. And see, isn't that the way life's supposed to be? I I don't know. I've and isn't, never... it, isn't it sad that we notice that we're just, and we wonder, wow, mm. they treat me just like everyone else. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, to me, that's yeah. a sad commentary of the world. Mm. When people go, wait a minute, they're treating me just like they treat everyone else. What the hell's wrong? You know, everybody's waiting for the other shoe to drop, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Well, America does that to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where it's, it's I, sad. I, well, no, not really. I just... Learn, if you have a bad behavior, just to address it and change it. It's a mental thing. You don't have to do anything. You just change your mind about something. Like, I could be a mental case about Jew jokes if I wanted to be. But why? What the fuck is the difference? It's a joke you know, to me. So why should I pretend it's not so I don't embarrass the other Jews? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> They don't care about yeah. me. I don't care about them. It's real. Reality is very harsh. We got all these ideas about these groups of people. But where are they? <laughs> on a TV screen, on in your table, you know. Yeah. And as far as in physical reality, most of us who are sane and not crazy, we don't live in chaotic situations. We live in quiet, peaceful times while the words world's on fire. That's our our luck has been that way, I would say. So far, you know, because the world so around us, yeah, Germany's got huge problems, and Denmark is border. We got a border with Germany. Okay, but Germany's got 
their 80, fearless leader that's Paul McCartney in drag. Yeah, so, and 80 you know. million Germans to deal with. So they've got huge problems from this COVID hoax. They had like a, they, I don't know if they were threatening to or if they were showing pictures of it, but some kind of march on Berlin and the six figures of people. Huge. But when you're looking at pictures, you don't know if the picture was taken today or was this somewhere, somewhere else. you got to do a little bit of it. Be patient and we'll work out the bugs before you go jumping on shit. See, I believe Corona is a hoax. But what I'm saying is I'm not sure that many people have the nut to march against the government in Germany right now. Sounds good, but hey, it could be a story somebody wrote and just you know, figure it out yourself. Because you can't go there to prove it. What are you going to do? I don't know. Grimmy's wanting to know who these people are that were dropping shoes. Um, Grimmy, that's because of all them donators and shit. Mm -hmm. You know, because donators like to dro drop just random shit everywhere. Mm -hmm. And shoes are part of it. Oh. So. Let's stamp out donators in our lifetime, damn it, because they're making shoes fall out of the sky. <laughs> Is that what's happening? And watch out for the jackboots, because I hear they go straight for the neck. Oh. Hey, Grim, I'm going to put a copy of a, a weird album I found. Debbie Harry did some vocals on it. But I, I listened to part of the first track. It was like country and western-y sounded. Thought it might interest you, because you like weird off-the-wall stuff. And if you're not interested, just let it go. But... uh I thought I thought of the Freakers Ball when I saw this earlier. Sorry to interrupt your chi. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just I'm reading the chat. Yeah. Berlin police break up protest for failing to social distance, and that that reminds me of you know all the newscasters and all they oh, could say cool. when Trumples was given his speech, which I actually watched the speech. Because I wanted to, you know, it, I was home, number one, yeah. and it was like, oh, what the hell? Let's watch it. I want to see what the hell he's saying. And mm. uh, I pretty much knew Biden's was. <laughs> so I wanted to see what Trumples had to say. <laughs> and, you know, all the the talking heads could say was, they're not social distancing. <laughs> They're not social distancing. Oh my God, he's having it on the on the the White House lawn. That that could be illegal. That could be. If such a thing could be, it would be. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh look at that. He's blowing up the Washington Monument. All those fireworks. Ah! And I thought, really? This is all you guys have to say. <laughs> all righty. And you get paid how much it to do that? I did you, didn't yeah. you? Well, no, this this was commentaries that I saw on Twitter later, and I just like, because well, some, sometimes you actually do need to check and see what the hell the other side is saying, you know, if for nothing else to know where they're coming from, see if maybe you've, um, you know, want to change your mind on something, because, you know, it never hurts to check out another perspective. It might actually have some key points that you will incorporate into your own so you know i was checking this shit out and it was like god dang you cannot write comedy skits as good <laughs> i mean seriously no i Comedians, hell i saw the onion is worried about going bankrupt because they can't make up shit more crazy than what's actually getting spewed out by the msm damn uh, and and that took a lot of years to get the public that stupid that they would believe the shit that they believe Yes, it did. It okay. was a very, 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 very slow simmer of right. those froggies. Right. So now now what they'll do is they're going to get rid of the old people are going to all go. And they're going to try to erase everything we ever did so that these younger people coming up will accept mass and fucking inoculation as a standard way of living. Because, you know, I wouldn't have done it if I was nah, as a kid. They, they would have asked me or said, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> No. Oh, you know what's funny about kids? I saw something earlier today on Facebook. So it must be true. Mm -hmm. Kids are coming home wearing a different mask than what they went to school with. Trading masks, yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. And I'm thinking, 
Safety. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Nothing's going to come of oh, it. Yeah. It ain't going to matter. Except they're going to get sick from because of the mess. But, well, at oh, least they won't be. die of the COVID. Oh, the COVID. <laughs> Shit. Just maybe passing herpes and what other kind of goodies are there? Never mind. <laughs> yeah. It, I was being optimistic uh, in this time of crises, if you know what I mean. Because you know what they call uh, a uh, you know what they call a virgin in California now? It's horrible. An ugly what? third grader. I was like, what the fuck? That state has completely lost contact with reality. Oh, and what what was it? Did I do that? On face, let me look at my my I don't Facebook know what real quick. That means Cause there was grim. there was three oh. ladies that were arrested just recent. I don't just in the last few days apparently that were you know luring kids into their house and then basically renting them to pedophiles for drugs and money. No. Anywhere from three month old no. to thirteen year old. Okay, that's enough. Ew. And it's like, and someone hasn't shot these women in the face with a bazooka. And then I had to do a rewind and wait a minute because it's like, whatever you put out into the universe will come back. I really don't want to get shot in the face with a bazooka. So I think, mm, may you get what you so richly deserve, what you have worked towards, what all of your words and deeds have brought you to down your life path towards. Yeah. And then I saw a comment on there about, yeah, I think it was on Facebook, but I don't think I shared it. In any case, I saw a comment on there. Someone said, just release them to the general population in prison. Because, you know, that's one of those things that prisoners, people in prison, you might think that they have no morals, they have no code, but I tell you what, most of them do not abide pedophiles. Child molesters, rapists of any ilk. Yeah. You know, those those people have a tendency to get targeted first. Yeah, well, you know what? I read a study about uh, making a person like me an aggressive guard. That when you get the authority, the behavior follows the authority. So even if I was to go into that as a profession and think, oh, I'm here to protect people. What I'd really be doing is looking for shit to fuck with and get into trouble. Okay. More than likely, yeah. Well, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. But, I found out that's what they they train for police officers. Yeah, because there's, there's no way to enjoy violence unless you're sick. So, there you go. Because I've... I've <laughs> Yeah, Hannah's saying hi. But I've had my share of fights when I was young, you know, as each, as a child and then growing up. But at a certain age, it just ended. Yeah, enough of that shit. But, hmm. So I have kind of a weird outlook on physical violence. I think there's always a way around it. Now we've got these people with automatic weapons, and they've got arguments to deal with. So they're beyond, I think they're beyond negotiation. It's getting serious you know when you start shooting people in the street period no there's no reason for that I mean, there was one thing they were burning places and setting shit on fire and cars and whatnot but now they're killing each other so what line was crossed with this murder and what are you going to do so it doesn't continue yeah, not see, you this was not, the, this was not the first one i mean there was shit going on in portland you know, I don't know. People were getting, they were turning on each other, and so I don't, I don't know. Violence begets violence. Pretty that's, much. That's kind of the way I see it. It's violence like, begets violence. It's looking like Palestine over there, woman. I'm, I'm getting a little, a little teary eyed in over parts, here. In parts. In yeah. parts. Yeah. Very. Well, that's how it starts. Oh, yeah. Well, they got rid of, what, 40 million people are are out of work? What the fuck? Plus the people already out of work. Now, the next week is the, the extension. Are they going to extend the thing another month for people to not be evicted? I mean, what the fuck is going on? Oh, 
out and I saw something about, you know, some of the demands of the BLM is, you know, no more rent, no more this, no more that. And it's like, seriously, you want to just have a, a free life? Okay, people don't understand that life is not free. There, are, There's always something that you have to do something in order to have something else occur. Even if you're doing something is sitting on your ass watching the boob tube, you know what else will occur? You'll probably get brain dead and become a very large couch potato. But something has to occur in order for something else to occur. It's, you know, it's cause and effect kind of mm. reality that we live in. And these people seem to think that they should be able to have free everything. Well, you can't have free everything. Nothing, 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 nothing is ever <laughs> free. <laughs> nothing is free. Even if you live in a cashless society where you did not have barter and trade, nothing is free because there's always some kind of exertion involved. You know, when when things stop moving, things stop. Okay. So, <coughs> well, you know, and part then, of that stoppage is life. So, so maybe if we narrow the argument down, instead of all this Black Lives Matter is so vague, it doesn't mean any fucking thing. The, and these idiots are white, and they're trying to tell you you're a racist. What the? Shut the fuck up, first off, right there. I would not, I'd slap them right in the fucking head. I'd get myself in so much trouble. So, luckily for me, I don't run around where there's any of those crazy people. <laughs> They're in Copenhagen. Oh, in really? Copen yeah, they got slapped around pretty bad in Copenhagen, too. So, they kind of shut up. I just got the boot out of the RLM. God, damn, uh, there's some of it. Uh, bad, Mary. Okay. Well, oh, I know. You didn't get the boot off the radio, so there, there's hope for us. Nope. We're, just re rethink your hoochie. That's what I'm stuffer. doing. But I have to I have to wait a while or it won't kick Grams out and then and I will be Grams is already logged in so it gives me this other bullshit and it's like blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, And I am not savvy to this kind of stuff and mm -hmm. it's not that I couldn't be, it's just that mm -hmm. it's not something that really I feel as though I need to become savvy too. Yeah. So therefore I do not focus any energy towards it. <laughs> I know how to log in. That's and all that's you need about to know. the extent of it. What more do you need? Wow. You're so demanding, well, like, you crazy like woman. I'm ghosting myself and all this yeah. other fun shit. It's like, oh, fuck it. Yeah. Well, I'll just wait a while. <laughs> you know, the other night I had to do a show alone. And oh, I, no. I found the, the, a full, 100% foolproof way to cure COVID. But I, oh, yeah? I just can't sell it to the United Nations. They think I'm crazy. Yeah. So what, what is the what is your cure for you, COVID? You join all the religions together, and you get a hundred percent protection from all the gods. Ah. So, cover yourself. Okay. From if every angle. indeed any of this god nonsense was real, people, of course, there's requirements to be fulfilled. And they yeah. shut the door. Everybody laughs when I want my way. What the fuck? You know, it's just like this God thing is ridiculous. But, you know, I could milk it for fucking money if I had that kind of nut. Be a Baptist minister. Praise the Lord. Such. Because, you know, you pe know people I was, do that. I was listening to a gentleman yesterday. I listened to another one of the open mind things. And this guy is is like a biologist and 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 he was talking about the human body mm -hmm. and how um the human body is actually only 10% human DNA, you know human mm -hmm. cellular mm -hmm. whatever you want to call human the rest of it is all microbes bacteria and viruses oh. the rest of your body mm -hmm. so only 10% of you mm -hmm. is actually you so basically mm -hmm. You are a super uh, biosphere. Yeah, it's cool, huh? Yourself. That's right. And so each one of us is walking around. We are, each and every one of us, basically a universe mm -hmm. walking around. And then when you look at it like that, then when you bring it down to every cell within your body, mm -hmm. could quite possibly be a little universe in and of itself. And then I start hearkening back to... Mm -hmm. 
men in black. Yeah, that was what I was thinking. (laughs) You know, and then you start thinking, okay, so each and every one of us, what if each and every one of us is just a little cell existing on planet Earth, and planet Earth, or maybe we're all just neutrons and Mm -hmm. electrons or whatever that are orbiting around the atom that Mm -hmm. is planet Earth, and that's just a cell in an even bigger body. Mm -hmm. And what if, what if, and I'm just putting this out there, what if this whole God thing Mm -hmm. is all of these infinite to the micro and infinite to the macro, all of these different perspectives, views, realities, dimensions, however you want to look at it, all of them just becoming self-aware. What if every little thing is actually all of it, Mm -hmm. God becoming self-aware? I don't know. And Rob says it's fractal theory. See? As above, so below. Which, yes, as above, so below. As in the macro, so in the micro. Yeah. That. <clears throat> what if every little bit hmm. is just God becomes self becoming self aware, and we call it God hmm. because we don't understand it. Hmm. I noticed you use the word "we" many times. I don't want to think like the herd. I don't mind being called names and shit to separate me from the normality of the herd. Know what I mean? Eh, eh, yeah. Know what I mean? Eh, eh. yeah. But then that sometimes that individuality is is frowned upon by people who think they're superior. You know what? What? Let them have their laugh. I mean, it, it's kind of a joke because we're all the fucking same. And at the same exact moment, we're not. It's very weird that the identity is what fucks this whole thing up, is your identity. Lose your identity and just be a face in the crowd. It's so nice. Same thing, only different. Yep. And yet we're, we're so, I think in this reality, we're all taught to... To be wary of different. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Rob well, said, what if separation yeah, is, the is the illusion, illusion. which, yeah. yeah. Could be. You well, know, it's, it's like, spend, what is that? Um, well, you are you are merely a drop in the ocean, hmm. and yet you are also the ocean in a drop. Yeah, but they spend an incredible amount of uh, resources and funds to get shit like these riots going for how many months has it been coast to coast? This is organized and funded by something. It's not just, you know, well, the world's crashing. These people are being bussed around to go burn places down and walk around with guns. What the hell? Yeah, because what the other hell happened? is bad. Other is different. Okay. Different is bad. Yeah, all right. But there was freedom once upon a time, and now it seems like there's, they're going to call it anarchy. But what I see is organized freaking uh not disobedience, but organized vandalism. It's not. Doesn't, oh yeah. Yeah. It seems like it's very coordinated effort. That. Yeah. yeah court. Ooh, I was losing it, man. Ooh, I'm glad you're here for me. But <laughs> well, sometimes you know you've done it. You know the word, and you just yeah. And then I find it for you. So we've we've done yeah. this before. But yes. man, what? It's it's almost like watching a freaking TV show. It's. I don't want it to be real, but I see it getting worse constantly. So, hmm. and and a part of me wonders if maybe the reason that we see it as getting worse is number one, it's the main focus of all of the corporate lame-ass propaganda systems out yeah, there. Yeah, right. Hmm. And number two is because obviously people aren't buying the bullshit, and so therefore they have to up the voltage, if you will. Hmm. But the problem is, you know, you can up the voltage for so long before you start getting spark back or uh, getting fit yeah, yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I think they have reached the tipping point where the bite back is coming. And, you know, they're all going to sit there just like Michelle Obama the other day said, white people just don't acknowledge my existence. Oh, dear Lord, if I could be so blessed as to not acknowledge that she exists, that would be a blessing. But she's such a victim, Hmm. such a victim, darn it all. But in her mind, she is. 
Now, the only way that that's really going to carry any kind of weight is if she convinces enough other people that she's a victim as well. Of course, she also has to convince them that she's a she. Now, I call her a she because, well, I'm, her she doesn't or him she just plain doesn't roll off your tongue quite as easily. But it's it's and it's just, yeah, makes me think of inanimate object. Yeah. Are you having and it trouble does feed into the victim mentality? So are, are you having so, trouble thinking like the herd? I'm I'm having trouble finding the proper pronoun. <laughs> On your own terms or according to somebody else's demands? On my own terms cuz this this is one of those things where my bike goes my mind goes but it's Mike, but it's Michelle, but it's Mike, but oh, it's Michelle, yeah, but it's yeah, Mike, yeah. but it's... And so uh, I have a feeling if I think about it too long, I'll start having tilt flash across my forehead. Yeah, so, that's what I'm going to go with my standard. It's, it's all bullshit. It saves me all those headaches of isolating the problems. Well, and that's why I really do wish that hmm. I could just not acknowledge that it, she exists, he exists, whatever, at all. You know, and and feed that narrative of, of it that no in my world you do not exist hmm. that wow. it, it would be nice if i could just have go there choice. but apparently right. i have trouble with it how come i don't know my mind keeps going back to no it was in the white house for a while there oh and yeah so, that uh, yeah that what i still what? have memories <laughs> okay. until i get my mental etch a sketch perfected those memories are still there Nah, I'm never going to be stuck like that because I just go with it's all bullshit. It saves me all the worries. Michael, uh, Michelle, you know, it doesn't matter. It's over. It's a done thing. And yet it's still part of somebody's reality. Not mine. Oh, thank you very much, but you can have it. Whew. Actually, Just, Circle, hmm. it's not anything to do with mich- with forgiving her, him, it. It's forgiving myself for falling into it and believe and buy yeah, it. Anyway, in the first place, yeah. Yes. You know, Cirque's being all black and white. <laughs> you yeah. you out deep Cirque on your on the dork table. You top that little missy. Ha! And you know what? Well, I'm kind of looking what? forward to Monday night, Grim and uh, Cirque in a dual radio podcast. Yes. So we're going to yes. have, yeah, well, they're a. It's a strange match there. <laughs> Gr- Grophy old Grim and silly little circle. <laughs> there you go. Grim yeah. cycles on. It's all connected. Yeah. One of them is waiting on a meteor and the other one's trying to dodge it. <laughs> and we do have a giant asteroid that is supposed to hit the day before the selection. So oh, yeah, sure. why? Why is everybody in such a hubbub about it? I don't know. Cause Actually, sweetie, I'm not doing anything to my spirit. It's like I need to stop allowing free rent space yeah, that's, I got in it. my yeah. head. Yeah, calm down. You sir. know, and I need to I need to forgive myself <laughs> for allowing free rent. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, she's down here now with the dog. <laughs> you know, so you know, it's and once again, that's a yeah. perspective kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, no shit, but it's true. Yeah, you're both right. It's it's a yeah. It's just funny how, how how you see this stuff. To me, it's yeah. not could give two shits one way or the other. Who's in the White House or who ain't or nope. Never got bothered by any of that. So I I see what you're saying, but not through experience from it. See, and yeah. I think I think I need to to keep gravitating towards that. Hmm. There's not a lot of other people here. There's just lots and lots of different perspectives. Ooh, I get more coffee. That, Ooh, this is cool. You know, that I can look around and I can see, oh, look at that perspective over there. I mm-hmm. wonder how that one formed. And look at that perspective over there. I wonder how that one formed. You know, instead of, I don't know, maybe maybe that will remove some of the judgmentalism. But, you know, and, the, and that was something I thought of yesterday while I was, pulling weeds yeah. is, you know, the whole judge not lest you be judged. Yeah. But, you know, lots of people go with, well, that means you shouldn't judge anyone else. And mm. I am I took it another direction. I went, instead of saying you shouldn't judge anyone else because that's actually denying yourself the ability to reason and make a choice based on observation. So 
there's nothing wrong with judging others. There's nothing wrong with judging things. You know, like I cast a judgment that I particularly like chocolate ice cream yeah. over strawberry ice cream. Oh, that wait is a, a judgment oh, call. That, yeah, big time. Racist. I prefer chocolate ice cream to, to strawberry. You're so, just okay, racist. I, I made it. You don't I like white down. people, I know. Now I saw it. I know. Me. Well, I'm racist. It's over. You're no, ruined. but I do. Li- I like vanilla ice cream, and I like chocolate swirl ice cream, which is a little bit of both. <laughs> I also like Rocky Road, and I also like that Tin Roof Sunday. Oh man, that's some good stuff too. But those are all judgment calls. I know. So the whole judge not less ye be judged. Yeah. What does How that really mean? In my, that? Mind, in my mind, in my mind, it means what? if you're going to cast judgment on another, whether it is a person or a thing, then you just open the door for that person or thing to cast judgment on you. Wow. Sounds serious. And so I thought, okay, I can do that. I can deal with that because people have been judging me my whole life, and most of the time I could give two shits less what their judgment is. Wow. <laughs> Damn. I mean, seriously, I've had a lot of people cast judgment on me, and it's like, okay, whatever. You don't yeah. have to live with me. I have to live with me. Wow. Well, so, mine's always in passing where I don't really care what they think anyway. It's not like my friends don't don't judge me harshly. They're fairly nice. So the people yeah. that don't, they just ignore me. So it's not painful. It's like, oh, thank you. Because if I had to talk to you, I'd probably want to slip my own throat. Oh, my. And life saves me that problem by just bringing up some kind of other barrier to overcome that nobody wants to overcome. So avoidance. There you go. Yeah. So avoidance comes into the equation because that's the road I choose. And yet avoidance is not necessarily a bad thing because that's a way of... That, of uh, expressing your boundaries and actually putting some right when you feel negative shit with your you know with your maturity I think this is what I've come to believe as you mature in life you get less aggressive and the less aggressive you are the more attractive you are to the kids coming up yeah so that's where I've gotten to is now that I've got some young friends in their 20s to 30, and they listen to the shit I got to say. They ask questions about stuff. So it's amazing. And they understand the fucking answers. And there's a lot of shit I don't have to explain to them because they already know it. So it's a, yeah. it's like couldn't be any better for me than it is. I I can't think, and the only thing that can improve is if uh, Karsten and and Larry and and Rob get along and understand this this uh, electrical thing. Excuse me. Because as an electrician, he's I sparked his curiosity when I asked him. I had a few questions to ask to see if if this would even interest him, and he and it did. And he knew exactly what I was asking him, and I, and I said, you know, that's illegal in the United States. And he said, no, I didn't know that. We do that here. I went, oh, okay. So when I made a point of, of the extra, got his curiosity. So now I'm open up to get the three of them together. <coughs> hmm. You never know what, you well, know, this guy might want to wrap his own freaking coil and make his own machine out here. Who knows? And didn't Moosey say something about her son, Matt? Yeah. And, was uh, wanting to... Larry was on here earlier, so Moose could have called in and asked him questions, but we didn't make think of it at the time. Maybe ne- next time Larry shows up, or the next time that... Uh, ask Rob. I don't see any problem with that. Calling up and having a, a few minutes to ask Larry a few questions. Sure. Yeah. He he's always asking, you know, is there any questions? So why not have a phone? What do you think, Rob? Rob's probably listening. He'll you you yes, decide. He is. It's his, well, it's more him and Larry's show. I just kind of interfere, think shit, you know. But it's mostly about them. Ah, he says absolutely. So what we've got at this moment is <coughs> if Moose is listening, for uh, Moose, if you want to call in on Thursday, we do the. Drop in a coil podcast. Call in and talk to Larry about it. 
whatever you're, whatever you want. <laughs> See, that's how I would do it. Not limit anyone to anything. Just call Larry and talk to him. Yeah, there you go. Because I have no idea what kind of help Larry could be, but it's always fun to ask him because he tries. You know? Yeah. And if he doesn't know something, he'll be the first one to tell you, oh, I don't know that. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for uh, them to, what? you know, come up with a finished product, and then I will purchase from them. How's that sound? Exactly. That's the whole point. And then once he and then his goal is so beautiful, but you you can't do it in the United States. There's never going to be a market the way the United States is being run right now, with the laws and the codes and the regulation and all that shit. You're fucked. You can't move forward. Stagnant. Burning coal for the rest of your freaking life. You know. No. Yeah. Well, until they come clean with this fucking bullshit stories they've been giving us about hemp and cannabis for 80 years, and just tell the fucking truth. Look, we lied to make money off these synthetics. This is the good stuff. That would at least be a start. But no, we get all this arguing and litigation, legalize this here and make it mandatory there. Fucking people, man. Where did, where did your balls all drop the fuck off is what I keep thinking. Yeah, make it mandatory. We're going to mandate this shit. Yeah. And I have what? yet to see, you know, people don't realize mandates are not laws. They're not laws. No, they're Now, they forced. may operate under the color of law, but they are not laws. It doesn't matter what they are. If people are willing to enforce shit with the use of violence, Mary, fuck what the law says. It's too. That, that's the whole problem we got here. We all rely on these fucking laws. Stop with the fucking laws already and throw them all out. Start over again with law. Start dueling again. See see how long violence holds up. It wouldn't. Have you seen these people? They're shooting each other in the street with automatic weapons, okay? Yeah, and, well, I've seen the shit. And okay, I'm, what, I'm, if, I'm, what if you had to face off 20 yards and shoot with a handgun? <laughs> Dual style. I don't I don't think they got that kind of nut. They got this group crowd thing going on. It's like going it, to a Yeah, concert. it is the herd mentality. Yeah. Oh, and then the herd thing again. The herd is a bad thing, people. It's not good. Don't be in a fucking herd. There's your first mistake. Letting the government control you. Fuck. You know, even if I'm wrong, okay, and I die of COVID tomorrow... At least I didn't bow down and kiss ass like some kind of weak fuck, <laughs> no. But I'll well, be I'll be on the radio with you Tuesday night because that ain't gonna happen. It's a fantasy. See, and the sad thing is that over the years, but, <clears throat> people have been taught what to think, not how to think. And and it really is very sad when you know those of us that were still allowed to you know learn how to do some thinking. When we look at this, and we tried to, you know, show our children, okay, don't just go along with what I say. Look for yourself. Figure it out for yourself. You know, cause that's what I did with my kids, and my kids figured shit out for themselves. Do I necessarily agree with everything they do? No. It's not your job, though, to do that. It's not my job. No. I taught them yeah. how. Yeah. It. Not what. That's it. Yeah. And that was my job. Parenting. If they ask for advice, I will give them advice. If they ask for an opinion, I'll give them an opinion. If they don't like it, fine. They don't have to like it. They don't have to take it. No, nope. they sure don't. That's okay. Well, it's all part of the process. Not, well, see, huh. that's the manufactured process we come from. It gives us problems like that, that other other societies don't necessarily have or if they do have them they deal with them differently well i think part of this whole thing is people don't realize really realize that children are sponges <laughs> yeah sure by yeah. example oh you yeah. know and, and yep. when you start dropping all kinds of cuss words and then you scold your kids for using cuss words it's like wait a minute hon they heard you, and they thought, well, it must be okay. <laughs> you did it. it. Yep, that's right. 
So when I'm around grandbabies, I curb my language. Do you ever tell them what to think? No. Have you ever been told what to think? Yeah. And how did you react to it? Look at them and I go, let me look that up. Every time? Let me let me just, lately, okay, well, I mean, like have... the last 20 years or so. Now, when I was a kid, hmm. you know, even when I was a kid, hmm. I do remember because, you know, growing up Catholic, hmm. and you, you hear that all those babies that, you know, are stillborn or die before they're baptized, they all go to purgatory. <laughs> I questioned that shit. It's wow. like, why? Ooh. Why should those babies be punished for eternity? Because they didn't get some water that you prayed over sprinkled on them. I don't get it. You know, and, and so I questioned I questioned organized religion at a very early age. I rarely questioned my parents, at least within earshot. Because <laughs> I, I knew the, you know, what the repercussions would be. Hmm. But yeah. I questioned religion. Yeah. I question teachers, and I tell you what, I had to retake some classes with different <coughs> teachers because I questioned the teachers, and they did not like being questioned. Oh, no, I remember that. So. Oh, that would get me three days kicked out of school if I did it right. I don't think, I never got kicked out of school, but I did. Well, they call it suspended, well, but yeah, three days. Yeah. I couldn't come on the property for three days. And I go, oh, please. Let me I never here. got that, but <laughs> oh, I Christ. did. I did get an F in English my senior year, and you had to have a full year of English in order to get your certificate, your graduation. Hmm. Which at that time it was like I need to get my diploma. Why I don't know, but I need I needed it at the time, hmm. and so I had to take a different English class to be able to graduate. Oh, I never it, did that. I was bad. Well. Uh, you know, now, knowing what I know now, I probably would have just gone for the GED and then gone out and worked somewhere and earned my own keep like I did after I graduated high school. I, I've i always had some kind of job or another, so hell, I didn't even, hell. I didn't even take the GED test until I was 21 or 22. I needed it for some paperwork. I don't know. I needed proof of, of education. Usually I could yeah. just bullshit my way through, but I hit this one job or something where they wanted paper. And the yeah. only way I could get it was to take the GED test, so I did. I just and you know took it. that in oh. and of itself was a slow process as well because well, my yeah. grandpa, when mom and I were talking, she said grandpa didn't graduate high school. Yeah. So what? Yeah, he quit school in tenth grade, I, and yeah. he did a damn fine job of mm -hmm. you know. Raising a family, providing for his family, providing for his extended family because apparently grandma's brothers liked to drink and and didn't like to actually work. So <laughs> they, you know, whatever they whatever grandma and grandpa raised, they had to share with other siblings just so the nieces and nephews could have something to eat. But that was a different time. You know, and, and gradually it got to the point where, show us your papers. Mm -hmm. So Germany, I don't think, was the very first one to pull that show us your papers shit. Oh, not and the first one. It was just, it's just in the modern day, it's probably just the most popular, famous one. Yeah. But sure. Yeah, and, so. Well, I was listening to somebody talk about the amount of Jews that died during World War II and blah, blah, blah. And they said, yeah, the numbers, the number fits. If you do the uh, the equation properly, it says yeah they probably lost four million Jews through uh, fighting, being shelled, machine gunned down, and blah blah blah. The other two million were worked to death. And <coughs> excuse me. And, um, and I found it to be a much better uh, answer as far as something so quick to define it. You know what I mean? That's a much better answer than that Auschwitz fucking death camp crap. And yet when you look back at a lot of this shit, six million is a magic number for a lot of yeah. these yeah. 
You should feel bad for these people because six million of them. You should feel bad for them because six million of them. Six Don't million have is masks. <laughs> you know, so whatever. Yeah, whatever. well, I, w I won't hesitate to, if anybody does give me the mask crap around here, is ask where's the biohazard dumps to put the dirty ones at. Because yeah. where am I supposed to put it when I'm finished with it? You want it, want me to drop it at your house? <laughs> Go find a Walmart parking lot. No, I mean, I'll be nice. Can I drop it yeah. off at your house when I'm finished using it? Because I don't want to put it in my garbage. Oh, no? Well, then I guess I won't wear one. <laughs> we all win. Yay! Anyway. I was being a funny guy on the end of a dork table, Miss Mary. I know you was. I know you was. And, and I was sitting funny. here going... Huh, and I just look at him and say, show me the science. No, well, the real, real science. Show and, me the real science. And I like to, speaking of real science, like to thank Larry Woods for dropping by at the door table and giving us a hey there, hi there, ho there. And, yes, that and was an, awesome. Yeah, an update on his project on our door table. Ooh. I'm, I'm, uh -huh. feel, I'm feeling the love, people. Yep, hmm? yep. Oh, Rob's talking about border control. Uh -oh. You know what border control is? No. It's controlling your own border, a.k.a. Uh, your own skin. Prison guarding. Period. Ooh, hey, okay. that's, that's the only real border that matters is, you know, your your yeah. body. That's a yeah. border. Yeah. Because all this bullshit that we all talk about on the Internet type about all the time, it's all about if there's nobody there to enforce the rule, there is no fucking rule. There you go. What is it? Circle always says, the emperor has no clothes. Pretty and much. Yeah. Yeah. Wayne told me earlier today that I could just walk around naked. And I said, well, I'm going to put some clothes on and I'll be naked under my clothes. How's that sound? And he didn't find that nearly as... <laughs> well, thank you for telling us that little bit of information there, Miss Mary. I will find it quite useful when I go looking for a sandwich. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say no, what I'm not going to say. It. I'm done. Okay. Anyway, so hey, thanks a lot for dork tabling with me tonight too cause Oh yeah, it's been fun. Tuesday. It's been fun. You won't be available for the imperfect nope. program. Ah, then I'll do an hour so I they're not so bad. It's just weird. I'll never get used to sitting there just talking to myself like I'm. It's very strange. I I, I don't. I'm probably losing my mind. Well, it is. <sighs> it is a completely different thing, you know, to to do a a solo show. Oh yeah, and, yeah. But you know what? I found yeah. I found this album called The Wind and the Willows, right from 1968. I was doing my you know YouTube crap. And uh -huh. every now and again, they throw something obscure at me my way, and I, I found it. I went, hey, I wonder what this sounds like, and it sounded country-ish and western-ish. So I, I sent cop, uh, put a copy up for Moose, trying to get her attention to look at it, because I thought it would be like her kind. Then I, uh -huh. I saw Grim, and I went, hey, Grim, you ever hear this? So I hope it's good, because it just sounded um, like uh, not good or bad. It just sounded... Typical, I think, is the right word for the kind of music it is. It's just that it's Debbie Harry before she became famous. So, shit like that. Oh! Yeah. Okay, she, The Wind in the Willow. Here, you I'll, said it's kind I'll, of hard of bluegrass ish. Here, I'll post a copy on, main, on the main feed of the RLM again. It's just, I thought okay. it would interest Moose and Grimm because they do the music all the time. And the bluegrass, kind of country ish and western y stuff. But because Debbie Harry's on this album got my attention. It's like, what? <laughs> She's got well, brown hair and she, it's real, wow. <laughs> well, and Wayne kind of yeah. has really been getting into the bluegrass and the banjo stuff. Yeah, kind of late. see? Well, and, that, and Moose has got all that shit. Yeah. Uh, see, got Freaker's Ball, too. <laughs> there you go. So, well, we cover, we cover a little territory. We're not locked into any one thing. Oh. That's because we're dorks, and we're dorkular, and we That's like to go right. dorking all over the place. You never know what you're going to... Well, I don't I don't depend on playing music, though. Well, anyway, we're almost done here. 
But uh, I, don't, I don't, as a rule, depend on uh, playing musical interludes and all that sort of stuff. I probably should, but I don't. All right, let me open up the close thing real here, quick here. Say goodbye to everybody there, Miss Mary. I recommend it. See you, love you, bye. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and if I don't see you before then, I will be back sometime Wednesday. Not sure when, but whatever. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Roger Wilco, over and out. <laughs>